The minor pentatonic scale is the number one most important scale that any guitar player will ever learn so long as they live. Is what I would say if I was trying to sensationalize this video and grab your attention in the crucial opening seconds. But because I'm the most sincere person on the planet, today we're going to talk about the number two most important scale you should learn on guitar, which is the major pentatonic scale. Now make no mistake, the minor pentatonic scale is the number one scale. It's the king of all scales. But the major pentatonic scale is, I guess, the duke of all scales? Now, I don't know if dukes are next in succession of power behind kings. I'm too lazy to look it up and too American to care. But what I can tell you is that even though the minor pentatonic scale is the most important scale, that doesn't mean it's the only important scale. And if you only ever learn guitar by learning sensational, exciting topics, you're gonna end up being a pretty incomplete musician. So today we're gonna break down how to play and how to use the major pentatonic scale. Starting right now with the demonstration of how to play it correctly. Okay, so first things first. If you haven't learned the minor pentatonic scale, which is played like this, then you need to go check out my video on that. That'll be linked in the description. But if you're familiar with that scale, let's go ahead and move on to the major pentatonic scale. Now, just like the minor pentatonic scale, we could choose any starting note on the low E string, but I'm just gonna stick right here on the fifth fret. To play the first note in the major pentatonic scale, you're gonna take your second finger and put it on the fifth fret of the low E string. And then you're gonna take your fourth finger and put it on the seventh fret of the low E string. Now moving on to the A string, you're gonna take your first finger and put it on the fourth fret. And you're gonna take your fourth finger and put it on the seventh fret. Same thing, four, seven on the D string. And then for the G string, you're gonna put your first finger on the fourth fret and your third finger will go on the sixth fret. And then for the B string, your second finger will be on the fifth fret. And then your fourth finger will jump up to the seventh fret. And then the same thing on the high E string. Your second finger is on the fifth fret, your fourth finger goes to the seventh fret. So the whole thing very slow is five, seven, four, seven, four, seven, four, six, five, seven, five, seven. So that's how you play the scale, but I also want you to know that you can move it around just the same as the minor pentatonic scale. So in the same way that the minor pentatonic scale is named for the first note in the scale, we were, uh, we were on A minor here, and if we move it here, it's G minor. Same thing applies to the major scale. So if we're in A major here, it's because that's the first note. If we make the first note G, it becomes G major pentatonic and it applies all across the fretboard. So now that I've showed you how to actually play the scale, if you're anything like me, you might be tempted to click off this video, but don't be like me. I'm more of a smooth-brained, glue-eating Neanderthal than you realize. Looks delicious. But that's why it took me so long to learn this stuff in the first place. If you want to speed up your learning process, stick around, because we still got to break down this scale and talk about how you can actually use it. The first thing I want to do is compare the major and minor pentatonic scales and kind of break down the naming convention behind them. First things first, they're both called pentatonic scales. Why is that? If we break down the word pentatonic, we'll notice that prefix, pent or penta, which means five. And the reason this is used in this case is because pentatonic scales all have five notes. Now you might be thinking, hey, obviously pentatonic scales have more than five notes. I can see that when I play them across the strings. But the truth is that pentatonic scales do really only have five notes. The reason it looks like they have more is because a lot of those notes repeat. I'll take the major pentatonic scale here on the fifth fret to demonstrate this for you. And if I don't repeat any notes, you'll see there's only five notes. One, two, three, four, five. And if I go to this note, which would have been the, uh, you know, quote, sixth note, really that's just the first note again uh, in a higher octave, which is the same note, just a different register. The same goes for the minor pentatonic scale. Again, I'll play that on the fifth fret, but it only has five notes if we don't repeat. One, two, three, four, five. And then when we get to sixth, if you want to call it that, it's just the same note as the first note. Next, we got to talk about minor versus major. What does that mean? These are words that describe tonality, and tonality is kind of like the character of a certain sound. Now pay attention here, because most people will tell you that major describes something that sounds kind of happy and upbeat, and minor describes something that sounds kind of sad and melancholy. And they're right. So you can see when I play the major pentatonic scale here, it sounds kind of happy and bright, and when I play the minor pentatonic scale, it sounds kind of dark and sad. 
So now that we understand that, how do we actually use this scale and why is it the second most important scale? Well again, as you already should know, the minor pentatonic scale is the most important scale because you're going to use it more than anything. The major pentatonic scale is the second most important scale because you're going to use it second most. This is because these two scale shapes are actually connected and they lead into one another. I'm going to show you how that works. If we start with the minor pentatonic scale. I'm going to put the shape of that scale on the screen. So obviously with the minor pentatonic scale, we play two notes per string. And if we look at the top notes, you'll see that those are actually the starting point for the major pentatonic scale. So these two scale shapes are actually connected because the major pentatonic scale starts where the minor pentatonic scale ends. So the question then is how does this actually apply to your guitar playing? Let's say for example you're jamming in the key of A minor. So you know that you can use the A minor pentatonic scale. So you know your notes in the low E string, you know that this is A. So this is where you're going to start and play the A minor pentatonic scale. If you want to expand your note selection beyond the minor pentatonic scale, you can actually move up into the major pentatonic scale. And like I mentioned earlier, the major pentatonic scale is just like the minor pentatonic scale in that it's named for the first note in it. And so even though for the major pentatonic scale that's connected to the A minor pentatonic scale, even though the first note there is C, which makes it technically the C major pentatonic scale, it would still work in the original key of A minor. So again, if you're playing a song in the key of A minor, you have that minor pentatonic scale available to you but you also have that major pentatonic shape available to you as well. Only it's the C major pentatonic scale instead of the A major pentatonic scale. Don't make this mistake. Just because a song is in the key of A minor doesn't mean that you can play A minor pentatonic and A major pentatonic. That won't work, but if you use what we've been talking about, how the minor and the major pentatonic scale shapes are connected, then you'll be able to play A minor pentatonic and C major pentatonic. Now conversely, if you're in the key of C major, then obviously you can play the C major pentatonic scale. But you can also go backwards and play the A minor pentatonic scale. That'll work as well. And I do want to emphasize that just like moving scale shapes around, moving this family of scales around works as well. So if we're in the key of G minor, playing B flat major also works. And if you're in the key of, I don't know, uh, E major, playing C sharp minor also works. So I know this information can be a little bit dense. Rewind this section if you have to. Ask questions in the comments. I'll make sure to answer them. I just want you to understand how these two pentatonic scale shapes connect and how you can use them in your playing. So now you know how to play the major pentatonic scale properly. We talked about why it's named that and how and where you can kind of use the scale when you're playing. But there's one big glaring question that remains. So right now you might be thinking, okay, I know how to play the major pentatonic scale. And that gives me a decent note selection. And if I pair it with the minor pentatonic scale, which I know I can do, then it expands my note selection a little bit more. But I see guitar players playing up and down the neck all the time. How are they doing that? What are they doing there? The answer is that the major and the minor pentatonic scales are a part of a family of scales that stretch all across the fretboard. There are five total pentatonic scale shapes, and the minor pentatonic scale, which again you should have walked into this video being very familiar with, is shape one. And the major scale, which we learned in this video, is shape two. There are three other scale shapes, and together all five shapes stretch across the entire fretboard. Now I don't say that because I want you to go race to learn positions three, four, and five. All right, we'll cover that on this channel, and if I've already made that video, by the time you're watching this, it'll be linked in the description. But for now, just focus on learning position two really well. The only reason I brought the other positions up is so you can kind of see where we're going. As my returning viewers know, this channel is all about putting the process of learning guitar into context and laying out the guitar roadmap. I think that makes it easier to learn, and I certainly wanted that when I was first starting to play guitar. And the other thing is, you know, I want you to be motivated. I don't want you to just blindly take my word that this is the correct stuff to learn. All right, trust the information, trust the music theory. Don't trust me. I'm not trustworthy. I'm just some guy. I'm the kind of person that got halfway through growing a beard and decided that I was pretty and interesting enough to get on the internet and start telling you what to do. I'm really kind of a jerk if you think about it. But anyway, let's recap. In this video, we talked about how to properly play the major pentatonic scale. Then we talked about why we call it the major pentatonic scale. Then we discussed how it connects to the minor pentatonic scale and when you should play it. And finally, we discussed its context and the broader canon of learning to play guitar and guitar skills. Good luck practicing, and thank you for watching.